Hello there once again, everybody. T back here for another of the Teachable Moments series, and we've got a humdinger of a play for you this week. It came to us uh, by accident. Somebody said it to us, and here we go. Uh, so it's a play. We're going to take a guess here. This runner's on third and second. The video's not great, but it is a tricky play. We're going to break this down for you in the two-man system as far as high school, college, and professional. So let's take a look at the play, and we'll break it down for you. So as you can see, the catcher is setting up, trying to get the ball. The Runner from third base, who we're going to guess is tagging up on the play, slides into the catcher, who is in not possession of the ball. The umpire doesn't see that he touches the plate, and when the ball is recovered, they tag the runner who calls him out, and then we have a firestorm of players and coaches and confusion, and the coach just demands that you go tell that other umpire, he's going to go tell you. And I'm going to stand here with my hands on my hips to show you how macho I am. And I'm going to stand with this one leg. And then I'm going to walk towards you when you don't give me the call that I want. And I'm going to tell you how wrong you are. So here's some things to prevent that before we get to the play in and of itself. Um, the first thing is it's important to understand that uh, until the ball gets there, we don't really have to start moving um, – in the, in the way this umpire, this umpire stood uh, behind home plate, point of the plate, and didn't really have a good perspective of what was what was going to happen here. If you're going to read this as a swipe tag, um, you need to be way out in uh, in the home plate area in the catcher's back pocket and be able to see that tag, which could very well happen uh, based on the throw beating the runner on the back of the helmet, on the back. You know, and some somewhere like that. Um, so you need to you need to get there and be able to see that play. But more importantly about this play, uh, before we get to the ruling of it, is where my base umpire is. My base umpire sees chaos going on, and uh, since he's not going to have anything to change the play anyway, because we got together, he needs to start getting players out of there. He needs to, you know, it's not uh, eight on one against the umpire. It's a team effort. You need to. Be on the same page. Get guys out of there. Maybe talk about it. And you know, it's going to be hard from 100 feet away to see whether the guy touched home plate. Uh, it's a it's a tough play. The ball gets away. So what are our rulings? Well, this is where I think you're going to have a different ruling in both high school and college and professional. In high school, I have obstruction all day. Two dash twenty two dash three article three. The fielder without possession of the ball denies access to the base runner. This is Article 3 now. Denies access to the base runner is attempting to achieve. I think that's pretty much what we have here. The catcher's not in possession of the ball, and the base runner is denied access to the base the runner was attempting to achieve. Uh, whether or not you believe, believe that there's something malicious here, that's your opinion. I frankly do not. I think you're taking the crap end of the stick if you do. Um, this is a crazy play and fun, one that you, know, you might have a different opinion on. If you do, leave it in the comment section below. Let's be... Uh, you know, respectful, and we'll talk about it. As far as the NCAA goes, uh, Rule 2.5 fine defined obstruction as the active fielder who, while not in possession of the ball or in the act of fielding the ball, impedes the progress of any runner. As further stated in Note 2 of this rule, if the fielder is about to receive a thrown ball and the ball is in flight directly toward or near enough to the fielder so he must not occupy his position to receive the throw, he may be considered in the act of fielding the ball. So I think in the college standard, the catcher's moving two steps to his left. He's trying to field the ball. I think he's got to occupy this position to receive the throw. It's important language. And so I don't think I think he's legal there. So now, since I don't have obstruction, I have to make my other determination, which the collision rule. Do I have an unavoidable collision? So rule 8-7-C the collision rule supports, it says, quote, it shall not be considered a violation of the catcher blocks the pathway of the runner in a legitimate attempt to field a throw. So I think we have that here. So we just have what is invariably an unavoidable collision. Um, so we have to also consider the act of the base runner, which we don't have a good look at here. We, we, we have a guess that the runner's butt's on the ground, butt and leg are on the ground before he contacts with the catcher. It's close. I think you're taking, like I said before, the crap under the stick if you go the other way. But did the runner veer out of his way to, to, to have this happen? Well, this is a tag-up situation from third base. So odds are he's running on that fair foul line just all the way along. 
And we don't have that angle. So if he did, for some reason, veer out of his way to contact the catcher, I think absolutely. But we have to play the hand we're dealt here. And in this hand, we're dealt uh, the video of it certainly looks like he's trying to score, runs into the catcher who's blocking his path, and then touches the plate. So in college, I tend to think that we really have nothing here. If you disagree, tell me something in the comments section below. We'll have a discussion about it. So I think it's pretty clear in Major League Baseball or professional baseball, what our ruling would be here. And that's a big ol' that's nothing. Um, there's no really no way to rule it other than that uh, in a professional ruling. Um, I don't see anything different here uh, from an NCA and professional standpoint, but maybe you do. Maybe, you know, the official rules of baseball that are similar to the NCA rule book, and it's 6-1-I, subsection 1, which states, a quote, a runner attempting to score may not deviate his direct pathway to the plate in order to initiate an avoidable collision. If the runner slides into the plate in an appropriate manner, he shall not be adjudged. He has violated 601-I. So there's that word that we talk about appropriate. This is where the rule book gets a little wonky, and uh, it can certainly be a little confusing. But, um, you know, what do you have? I think if we're apt, If we're applying the rules here as we should be, we're going to have a big old that's nothing. So how do we officiate this? We certainly don't want to give a that's nothing at the plate. But one of the things we can do is kind of say it out loud. So, nope, we've got no tag. So that runner doesn't go back. So if if the guy tags him and, boom, he doesn't have the ball, hey, no tag. But you don't want to give a mechanic. You can certainly verbalize it, but no mechanic. Um, because then the runner might think he's safe, even though he would know he's safe because he didn't touch the plate. Now, it's important to follow the play. Uh, This umpire may have uh, not uh, followed the ball. He may have followed the runner, but there's a lot going on here, and there's certainly looks like it's one of those tight, enclosed spaces where the dugouts are really close, so it can become a little claustrophobic. Um, I I think tag-ups... In general, we have tag-ups when there's a play. They're relatively like pickoffs, right? They're relatively close plays. See a you want to read when we have this is where again understanding the way people throw a right-handed thrower uh, you know it's gonna ball's gonna tail in a uh, depending on how it releases it, you're gonna tail a little bit to the right so you know a left-handed thrower might go in the other direction so understanding where the ball's coming from in addition to what arm the guy's releasing the baseball with could be a, you know a little tidbit of information that could help you in your positioning this play this this looks to be a case where the runner a bad throw, and the catcher were all in the same place at the same time. We are human beings. There are sometimes unavoidable collisions. Want to learn more about Close Call Sports? Check us out on the World Wide Web at, World Wide Web at CloseCallSports.com. You can also look us up on Facebook and on Twitter at Umpire Ejections and right here on YouTube where you're watching this video. Give us a thumbs up. Or subscribe to us on any of the platforms. Uh, We hope that you would be glad that you did. Until next time, for everybody here at Close Call Sports, T-Mac signing off. Happy umpiring, everyone.